Hi, I'm Dr. Shahriar Hussain. I'm here today to help you practice more on variables. We will build a calculator program today using Java. From the last video lecture, you know how to add two numbers and how to subtract one number from another. In the exercise which I provided on Computing for all.com, I asked for multiplication and division as well. I will extend the concept that I described in the previous class. I will write the code of the last lesson and also do the exercise, which is the inclusion of multiplication and division. That should be good enough for a primitive calculator. One item is that in our code, we are hard coding the numbers so far. That is, every time we change the numerical values of the variables, we need to compile the code to generate the class file because of the change. In an ideal program, the program should ask the user for two numbers and then the program should do whatever mathematical operations it is supposed to do. I will now share my screen with you so that you can see how I write the program. I will keep explaining on the way. Suppose the name of the Java file I am working on is myprog.java. Therefore, the class name has to be myprog. The scope of the class is within a set of curly braces. I will now write the main method. I am writing the main method public static void main and the parameters. The main method has a scope within a set of curly braces. We will write the instructions inside the curly braces. Please note that we are building a calculator program. Therefore, we need two numbers held in two variables. These two variables will be the operands of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We are not working on any sophisticated calculator program today. The calculator we will build will only have the ability to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Let us declare two variables. These variables are double variables. We already know how to declare two double variables from the last lecture. The names of the two variables that will become our operands are num1 and num2. I declare the first one by stating double num1 semicolon and the second one by double num2 and I put a semicolon. I should mention again that we have to put a semicolon at the end of each instruction. The line public static void main is not an instruction. It is defining where is the starting of the program. Therefore, public static void main does not have a semicolon at the end. Over time, we will see that there are statements in Java for which we do not put semicolons. An instruction is a unit task. In general, each instruction inside the main method must have a semicolon at the end. Anyway, I declare another double variable named res, res, in which I will put results of the mathematical operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now we will put some values inside num1 and num2. Let us write instructions to put 25 inside num1 and 12 inside num2. So far, we declared all the variables 
and initiated num1 and num2 with the operands. I will first add the two numbers in num1 and num2 and put them in the res variable. Note from the previous lecture that in a line with the assignment operator, the computer executes the right side of the assignment operator first. Whatever the value of the right side is, the computer copies the value to the variable in the left side. The left side cannot have anything other than one variable. When executed, res should contain the summation result. Let us print the summation result on the terminal, as we did in the previous video lecture. If we run and compile the program, we should see the value of res, which is the addition of num1 and num2 on the terminal. To be exact, the output will be summation 37. Now, we would like to do the subtraction. Notice that after printing the summation result, we can reuse the res variable for any other operation. We will subtract. So we write res equals num1 minus num2. Then we put a semicolon. We write a system.out.println instruction to print the subtraction result. Similar to addition and subtraction, let us write the code for multiplication and division. Each of the mathematical tasks includes one line of instruction to do the mathematical operation and one line to display the result. After you have written the code for all four operations, compile and run the program. We can see that results of all the operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division are correctly printed on the terminal. While I like the code so far, notice that for a pair of new numbers in num1 and num2, we have to recompile the code and run again, which is not a good idea for software development. The user does not know how to compile or change the code. Therefore, we need to modify the program in such a way that the program asks the user for two numbers and then the program outputs the results of the mathematical operations carried over the two numbers that the user provided. Assigning values directly in the code like the ones we have done here is called hard coding. Instead of hard coding the numbers, we will change the code so that the program asks for input to the person who will run the program. Getting input from the user is not entirely straightforward in Java. I will introduce a few new items regarding getting information from the user. The items might not make much sense at this point because we are still not familiar with methods, classes, and objects. We will be using the new items to get input from the user much later when we learn advanced topic, we will understand the inner functionality. Anyway, to enable your code to get inputs from the user, you need to use the scanner class, which we are not familiar with at all. At the beginning of the code, even before the first line, now we have to write import java dot util dot scanner then put a semicolon for now the explanation that might make sense is the following
This particular class scanner has the functionality written in it that allows a program to get user input. Through this line, your program is telling the Java Virtual Machine to import that functionality of scanning numbers from users. Now, instead of hard coding the numbers to num1 and num2, we will ask the user to enter two numbers by typing on the keyboard. Our program will assign the two numbers that the user provided to num1 and num2. Before the assignments, we will have to create a scanner object. To create a scanner object named scan, I am writing this line. We have not discussed objects yet, therefore it will be hard for you to understand this line at this point. For now, you will have to trust the following explanation. This line creates a scanner object named scan that is capable of capturing the input the user will type on the keyboard. Previously, we assigned 25 to num1 and 12 to num2. These two lines must change because we are not hard coding anymore. Instead, we will tell the computer to copy the number that the object scan captures to the variable num1. In the right side of the assignment operator of num1, we write scan dot next double, then we put a set of empty parentheses, then we put a semicolon. That is, the object scan will wait for the next double number entered by the user. Once the user types a double number and hits the enter button, the scan object will send it to the num1 variable. If the user does not type a number and it does not hit the enter button on the keyboard, then the program will remain weighted at that point. Now let us do the same for num2. In the right side of the assignment of num2, we will write scan dot next double empty set of parentheses, then a semicolon. In this line, the program will wait for the second number to be entered by the user. Now the program is ready. Save myprog.java and compile it. Now let us run the program. Notice that the program is not displaying anything now. Instead, it is waiting, which looks like the program is stuck. Actually, it is waiting in the line num1 equals scan dot next double. It is waiting for the user to type a number and hit enter. Now, as the user, I am typing 22.4 and then I press the enter button. Notice that the program is again waiting. It is because now the execution is in the line num2 equals scan dot next double. The computer is waiting at scan dot next double for the user to enter another number which the computer will put in variable num2. Therefore, as the user, I am typing 2.0 and then I will hit the enter button. As soon as I will hit the enter button, the scan.next double will capture the value 2.0, then the assignment operator will send 2.0 to num2. Once num1 and num2 are ready, the computer will execute the rest of the lines in a ziffy. That is, the summation, subtraction, 
multiplication and division results will be printed as soon as the num2 variable receives a value from the user. Now I will hit enter and the program will print all the results. The user can run the program again and again. Each time the program will wait twice for two variables num1 and num2. One thing that I would like to include in the program is a message on the terminal before the terminal starts waiting for num1. I would like to add a system.out.println instruction and then write enter the first number inside the parenthesis inside quotations. Similarly, before the scanner waits for the second input from the user, I would like to print on the terminal enter the second number using a system.out.println method. Save my prog.java and compile it. Run the program. Now notice that the program prints enter the first number before it starts to wait for the first input. Now I enter 20.2. The program now receives the first input. Before it started to wait for the second input, it printed enter the second number. Now I enter 2.0. The program prints all the results. Notice that this version of the program is more user friendly since the program is communicating with the user by providing guidelines like enter the first number or enter the second number. If you have any question or if you are struggling to compile and run any of the programs we discussed so far, please do not hesitate to contact us via computingforall.com or by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Thank you for watching the video. We will be coming back soon with another video in this video lecture series. To stay in touch, please subscribe to the computingforall.com website and to our YouTube channel. Thank you.